Hello everybody and welcome back to the Cole Lang's channel where today it will be my absolute pleasure to introduce the wonderful world of Grammaticzki Padeji to you or in English grammatical <laughs> grammatical cases. Now, if you're anything like me, you've never been excited to study grammar in your life, and I don't blame you at all, but cases are an integral part of the Russian language, and an incredibly cool one at that, as we're going to get into later in the video. So if you can't read Cyrillic yet, by the way, I highly recommend that you go check out my previous video that I made about how to learn any alphabet or script really in a couple of hours. Once you get those techniques down, it becomes quite easy to pick up new scripts, but I digress. So in this video, I'm going to show you what these things are, why they're important to learn, and how they're formed. With that said, let's start with the what. What are Russian cases? Well, if you spent any amount of time on the language side of YouTube, you may have encountered funny memes like this, right? Where on the surface, it may look like there are far more ways to say the same thing in Russian than there is in English. In this example, we have the four, really the four main ways of saying the, the verb to do, right? And then you may look at this absolute nightmarish looking wall of text and think, wow, there's so much more information I need to learn in order to reach the same level in English. Now, I understand why you can look at this and be super intimidated, but the way that I like to look at it is that, wow, there are so many different ways that I can express myself in Russian. And that's something we're going to see later in the course, is that these cases really allow you to more accurately and more concisely convey the meaning of what you're trying to say than in English. So if you think about how that applies in real life, right? Think about Russian literature, all the great works of art that have come out of Russia. Think Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Pushkin, and other amazing writers that grew up speaking this language. Now, I'm not saying all of their genius could be attributed to the language they spoke when they grow up, but it definitely didn't hurt. And I also don't want to scare you right off the bat, but these actually, they're not really a part of the case system at all. These are more for verbs and the verb conjugation system, which honestly is a lot simpler than how it's being portrayed in this image. Cases have more to do with nouns, numerals, names, things like that but I promise you that they're not as scary and as difficult as this picture makes them out to be. Now, after looking at this absolute monstrosity, you may be asking yourself, well, why is it like this? Why do these exist? And there's a very simple answer to it. It's because of the word order. You see, in English, our word order is very simple. It is subject, verb, object. So you can think of it like I eat, oop, I don't know. Sentences in English always follow this structure, and if you switch around the elements of a sentence, like if you say poop eat I, for example, the meaning of the sentence will be changed completely, if not render it completely incomprehensible, right? But in Russian, that's not the case. You can switch these bad boys around, and the meaning of the sentence will stay exactly the same. Let me show you an example. The dog bites the boy. So because of the order of the words, we know exactly who is doing the biting, the dog, and who is getting bitten, the boy, right? Because the dog is the subject and it comes first. But like I said, in Russian, we can actually switch these two things around so we can have the sentence say, the boy bites the dog, and it'll still mean the dog bites the boy. Now, how is that possible? Well, now we'll be looking at the how. How do cases actually work? So let's take this same sentence and look at it in Russian. Okay, so the first thing to keep in mind is that in Russian, there are no definite or indefinite articles. Now, in plain English, all that means is that the words a and the words the don't exist. They do not exist in the Russian language. They are completely omitted from everything. Now you may think, wow, that makes the language a lot simpler, but it actually makes it a bit more complicated, but it's not terrible. Let me elaborate. Now the elements in this Russian sentence, sabaka kusayet malchika, are in the same order as our English sentence. The dog bites the boy. But the reason why we know that the boy is getting bitten and the dog is doing the biting is because of this little letter at the end of the word boy. You see, if you were to look up the Russian word for boy 
in the dictionary, it would look just like it looks here, but without that A at the end. So by adding this A, we are showing to the person that is reading our beautiful work of art or who is listening to us speak that this is now the object or this is the thing that's getting bit. And that is exactly why we can switch around dog and boy and the meaning of the sentence will stay exactly the same because to Russian speakers, this A that is added at the end of the word boy signals to them that it is the object in the sentence. It is the thing that is getting bitten. So its position in the sentence doesn't matter. So in a conversation, you could very well say Malchika kusayet sabaka and people will know exactly what you're trying to say. Now, in practice, people don't really do this that much. Usually they follow the same order as in English. So subject, verb, and object. But you can see that if you're trying to make something like a poem or a play or something that involves a lot of wordplay and nuance, you can see how easily and accurately Russian speakers can manipulate these sentences to make them sound as beautiful as they want them to be, right? Now, I know that was a lot, but the main point to take away from this slide is that because this letter A was added to the end of the word boy, it is now the object. So cases are formed by adding word endings to already existing words, if that makes sense. Now, there are six types of cases, and each case has its own unique set of word endings and their own unique uses. But I don't want you to worry about any of these crazy words right now. We're going to go super in-depth about what each of these words mean and what purpose they play in your mastery of the Russian language. Oh, and if you're curious, this A ending in our example sentence is one of the word endings of the accusative case which will actually be the next video in this series. Now to sum up, I know this is an extensive topic and a lot may not make sense to you right now, but I'm telling you all you need to know right now is that cases show what role nouns play in a sentence by changing the endings of words. That's it. They're not scary. And what's really cool is that there's no pressure to be perfect. Yes, there's a lot of information here that you'll have to learn over a long period of time, but it is impossible not to confuse the endings of words sometimes. You know, native speakers don't use the correct word endings all the time. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to use the cases absolutely correctly all the time, because even if you use the wrong cases, people are still going to understand you nine out of 10 times. And remember why we're learning them, right? It's part of a bigger whole. They allow for greater accuracy and flexibility in communication. So the more Russian that you learn, the more appreciation you will gain for these things because you can express yourself in all sorts of different ways that simply don't exist in English. So if that sounds exciting to you, stick around for the next six videos where we will go into each case in depth. And by the end of this, you will have a solid grasp on the Russian grammatical system. And all that will be left for you to do is to practice them on your own to encounter them in natural settings and get that repetition needed to build them up in your mind. I promise you guys, the journey that you're on right now is so worth it. And I'm so excited that you've decided to go out of your way to learn Russian.